Now then, if you don't believe in ghosts, this story might possibly change your mind. Well, in January 1956, 15-year-old Shirley Hitchens came home to discover an ornate silver key lying on her pillow. Nobody in her family recognised it and it didn't fit a single lock in the house. Well, while the discovery seemed insignificant at first, it was actually the beginning of 12 years of torment at the hands of the so-called Battersea Poltergeist. And as Shirley retells the chilling story for a new podcast, she joins us now. Good morning to you, Shirley. It's great to see you today. And at the time, this story was well publicised. People have talked about it for years because it is such a remarkable story. But you felt like this podcast was the right thing to do because you quite simply had more to say. Yes. Um, it, it happened all that long time ago and the book had been written and I was approached by Danny Robbins to do the podcast early last year. And because since the book came out, um, we have found so much more about Donald and uh, it, was, it was giving up its secrets. Um, I, I accepted Danny's offer to uh, do the podcast so that I could uh, further, you know, tell on with the story. Well, Donald is the name that was given to the poltergeist. And just explain what life was like uh, with the family. What did Donald actually do to you all? Oh, it, it was horrendous. It, uh, as you said, it started with the key. And, and that night, uh, the noises began and it seemed to come from the walls and the ceiling, the floors, and both neighbours either side, because we terraced house, um, heard it, and the police were called at three o'clock in the morning, and they heard it out in the street, and um, it went on till, I think, daylight, and we were all traumatised and I just, because I was a little girl, I clung on to my dad and said, please make it stop. And um, it, it didn't. There was, you know, daylight came and uh, we were very, very traumatised and um, it went on for there and it lasted for weeks, every night, pound, pound, the noises. And then things started to, uh, pots and pans would be uh, thrown and we had to dodge them, you know, in case they hit you. And uh, at one time the clock came off the mantelpiece and floated across the room and landed on the dining room table. And we just, at night, when all this was going on, just sat in the kitchen and... and to ride it out and let it all happen. It must have been so frightening. I mean, your father had to give up his job. I mean, this went on all in all. This kind of went on for over a decade. A lot of people would be saying, why, why didn't you move? Or why didn't you go and stay with somebody else? Uh, well, my parents were happy. Uh, we rented the property and my grandmother and uh, stepbrother had the top flat and my mum had the bottom flat and she was an invalid. And it, it was all key for her to get about in a wheelchair. And they didn't want to move up until it happened. We, I had a, a lovely childhood and um, we just didn't know what was happening to us. It's but interesting, it, it, Shirley, though, the thing is there, you say one thing there, that, that the house was uh, a rental. Um, so yeah. this, is, this, was, this was an experience that was enough to prevent your father from working. It made him ill. Now, we'll come yeah. to the fact that your, your mum actually, when Donald finally went, your mum missed him because it was like losing a son in the house. I mean, she'd, got, she'd almost got sort of fond of this madness. Um, but, um, but at the same time, you, you could have moved um, and there were people within the media, within the street, within the police force, um, who, who actually thought, this is someone in the family. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're making this up. Yeah, well, the finger was pointed at me because um, 
uh, after a while, uh, Miss Chibbit, the investigator, turned up, told us what we had a poltergeist, and we'd never heard of it before. And uh, he was a lovely man, and he stuck with us, and uh, he, he he camped out in our uh, kitchen diner, and um, he, he it was through him that I'm lucky to have all the the files that he did a day to day, um, what happened, and um, he he did tame Donald in the end. He 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 was the one that got through to him. Well, he left in 1968. Donald left in 1968. You weren't at home at the time. Um, he wrote a note. Just wrote goodbye. Uh, and uh, and he disappeared. Your mother missed him, as I mentioned, and he took the key, that key that was there the first time was never seen again. Um, do you know why he, he disappeared? What, what, what was the prompting of Donald suddenly disappearing? Um, I don't know. Um, I was living in West Sussex, and my parents were in Battersea, and uh, we were getting messages where we lived, uh, telling us that what my parents were doing in in London, and the, they were getting messages what my husband Derek and I were doing in West Sussex, and um, out of the blue one day, Dad phoned and said we had this message. He used to call me girl. He said uh, we I think Donald has gone. He left the message that he was going. Mum immediately went into mourning and was very upset. But Dad and I, yippee, you know. We're relieved. Get on with my life now. Yeah. I mean, Shirley, the um, the podcast, uh, actually, you do kind of get to some sort of conclusion with this. And I know that you don't want to spoil that and we wouldn't do that, but you do sort of have a bit of a clue at who Donald was, why that he was there with your family. So all of those sort of things are investigated and discussed. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much. The podcast is on BBC uh, Radio 4. Um, so lots of information there. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you.